Lord Jesus Christ says, I have come that they might have life, and that they might have life more abundantly. That is, those who believe on his name, those that is who trust in him who rely upon his person, and that which he has accomplished in order uh, to bring life to men and women such as yourself and myself. And life, of course, that's the requirement, is it not? Because we live in a world. We live in a world that is, uh, can only be described as the realm of death. You know, we are we're born into the realm of death. We're born into a, an earthly existence, not life. No life until God gives us life. No life until God resurrects you from the dead. Until God regenerates you. Until as, well as Jesus puts it, until you've been born again. No life, my friends. No life, nothing but death. An existence in the realm of death. And then for all eternity, Everlasting death, opposed that is contrary to everlasting life. But whosoever believeth on Jesus, that is, whosoever believeth shall not perish, die, that is, in their sins, but have everlasting life. My friend, death, we live in a culture of death, don't you know? And God's commandments, well, given to us not, not to bring life to us, the commandments, the law of God, cannot produce, cannot give you life. Only Christ, only Jesus, only He who is the resurrection and the life, He alone, He alone can give life. Life is His to give and life is His to take away, don't you know? We have no authority, none whatsoever, to take human life. There's a commandment, the sixth commandment of God's law. If you want to check it out, Exodus chapter 20, it says, it says, my friends, thou shalt not kill. Human life, you see, is sacred. Human life is very precious to God, and God, Oh God, my friends, he brings, he brings all lawbreakers to justice, but he brings killers, he brings manslayers, he brings murderers, he brings them to judgment as well. Rest assured of that. Some of God's law, you see, is well given to us in these Ten Commandments given to us by the Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. Some of God's law, he says, is that you should love God and love your neighbor as yourself. But we don't, my friends. We don't do that. We do the opposite. Because we are conceived in sin, born in sin, because we are sinful natures, we do the opposite. We hate God and we hate our neighbor. And one of the ways, one of the prime ways in which you express your hatred for your neighbor, especially in this day and generation, is the killing, the hatred, the hatred in your heart that is expressed, that is worked out in the killing, in the illegal taking of human life by all kinds of means, drugs, violence, abortion, euthanasia. There's no end of it, my friends. You live because of your lawlessness, because of your iniquitous living, because of the hatred of your hearts, because of your sinful natures. You're given over to and you live in a culture of death. My friends, life and death are in the hands of God. Life is God's to give, and life is God's to take away, not man's. 
One exception, Genesis chapter 9 and verse 6, the manslayer, the one who kills, the one who murders another human being by judicial means, judicial authority, that person's life is forfeited also. So my friends, that's the one and only exception to the taking of human life. All others, my friends, sin, lawlessness, killing, murder, thou shalt not kill, says God, because life is sacred. But of course, your killing of your fellow human being by whatever means is just another expression of your hatred for God. In your nature, in your sin-conceived nature, in your sin-conceived life, my friends, in your hatred for God, well, you would kill God if you could. But of course you can't. That's an impossibility. So what do you do? Well, you turn to and you do the next best thing. You hate your neighbor with all of your being and you kill your neighbor contrary to God's law. For this God will bring you to judgment. Thou shalt not kill, says God. Thou shalt not. And of course, your modern predominant religion in your world today, that of daft Darwinian evolution, the religion of evolution is a religion of death, a religion of death. The weakest, the weakest go to the wall, the weakest are put down, the weakest are killed, and the strongest survive. That's Darwinian evolution, and that's your religion, that's your belief, that's what you subscribe to. So is it any wonder, is it any surprise to you that you've got a culture of death? Death, my friends, it stalks you everywhere, and not just by COVID-19. That's the least of your worry. No, COVID-19, yeah, it takes it has taken its thousands, and it'll take a lot more before it's done. But my friends, there's more to worry about. There's worse than COVID-19. There's your, there's your modern day medics who are engaged in murder. There's your abortionists, my friends. Oh, then I tell you, it stops your society, the Grim Reaper stalks your society. There are some things the Bible says that are never satisfied. One of them is death. The grave is never satisfied. It swallows up men and women day after day after day in their thousands. But death came into the world, my friends. It came into the world by sin. It's not natural. If it was natural, you wouldn't be afraid of it. The Bible says death is the king of terrors. It terrifies men and women when they're faced with it, when it comes to them. When the grim reaper comes, oh bold, bold today, arrogant today, you laugh at it today, but when it comes, when the grim reaper comes for you and slits his slimy fingers around your soul and drags it out of your body and returns it to God for judgment. No, not so brave then, not so arrogant then. No, it's the king of terrors, my friends. It terrifies men and women. Thou shalt not kill. That's the commandment, my friends. But that's your modern day religion, the religion of death, Darwinian evolution it's the same religion don't you know that drove adolf hitler to be responsible for the death of millions and millions of people it's the same religion that drove stalin joseph stalin mousy tongue to the slaughter to the killing of millions and millions of people now 
all death in the world, the majority of death in the world, is not caused by religion, as you say, but by unbelief, by godless unbelief, by atheistic, godless Darwinian religion, responsible for more death than anything else in your world today. True religion makes alive. The religion of God makes alive. The Son of God, the only begotten, He's the life giver. He's the resurrection and the life. He doesn't harm. He doesn't hurt. No, my friends, He gives life and He gives life abundantly. He gives life in its fullness. He gives life, my friends, to those who will repent, who will believe, who will trust in Him for salvation, for forgiveness. No, no, my friends, hatred, the root of it, the root of your killing, all your killing, my friends, abortion, euthanasia, drugs, violence, my friends, the killing, the murder of your fellow human being, it comes from the heart, it's a heart problem, hatred for God and hatred for your neighbor, that's where it comes from, abolish the hatred for God and you abolish the killing, get rid of the hatred in your heart for God and you get rid of the killing, the slaughter of human beings. That's the root of the matter. It's the heart that needs changing. You must be born again, says Jesus. The heart must be changed. Life must be given to you. Forgiveness, pardon, eternal life given to you, and the love of God placed in your heart by God himself. But the law, the law of God requires, my friends, this is the commandment, thou shalt not kill. And it matters not what the state, matters not what the government says, doesn't matter what they addict, doesn't matter, my friends, what men say, what men think. God says, God says, God says, God commands, thou shalt not kill. And that, my friends, goes to the root of your being, into your heart, the hatred in your heart for your fellow man. That's the beginning. That's the root. That's where the murder, that's where the killing comes from. But of course, the commandment is that you should love your neighbor. And to love your neighbor means that you do everything all that you possibly can to preserve human life. The unborn, madam, the unborn as well, the baby in the womb, you do everything, everything you possibly can. When the government advocates for abortion, what do you do? You lift up your voice and you cry against it. Murder, 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 you cry. Thou shalt not kill, says God. Thou shalt not kill. No murder. No murder. Away with it. Murder is government. That's what you've got today. A killer government. And a killer national health service. Now, God requires, my friend, that you love your neighbor that you seek to preserve the life of your neighbor, even the vulnerable, even the aged, the terminally ill, those who are not able to defend themselves, and that includes babies as well. Preserving, preserving with all your might, doing everything you can to preserve human life. That includes even the way that you drive your motor car. Yeah? Think about it, my friends. Thou shalt not kill. But the natural state of men and women, God did not make us this way. God did not make us this way. In the beginning, God made man upright. But the Bible, 
he says, he says that men have sought out many inventions, invented sin, lawlessness, disobedience to God. Your first parent, Adam, the head of the human race, he sinned and brought sin upon the rest of us, the entirety of the human race. So now, by natural generation, one after the other, we are all of us, every one of us, conceived in sin, born in sin, live in sin, hating and hating one another, hating and killing one another. Thou shalt not kill, contrary to what God has commanded of us. And now, my friends, to a man, to a woman, none good, none capable of any good, none whatsoever. There is none good, says God, and there is none that doeth good. None righteous, says God, no, not one. Not a man, not a woman, born of a woman who is righteous in the eyes of God. Sinners by nature and sinners by practice. Inclined to all kinds of wickedness and all kinds of deviance. Drawn by nature to do everything contrary to God's law. God says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. So what does man do? He invents religions in their thousands and uses God's name in vain in subscribing to those religions. You see, my friends, contrary to God, in every which way God says, Thou shalt not kill. But what do men do? They go about killing hating one another and killing one another. Contrary to God's law, because you're contrary to God in your very nature, that's why. And that's what it means, my friends, to be ungodly. But you see, my friends, sin does not remain static. It's organic. It grows. It develops through the generations right to the very end. And when it's fully grown, fully developed, my friend, well, then comes the end. Then comes the time when God judges the world. All men shall, shall appear before the judgment throne of God and give account for their lawless deeds. Give account for their killing. Give account for their blasphemous religion. Give account, my friends, for their sinful nature. What answer, my friend? What answer? Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Not by the law shall anyone be justified. No, no, my friends, the law can't do that for you. All the commandment can do is kill you. All the commandment can do is kill you. The commandment kills you in the same way you kill your neighbor. Yeah, it kills you. Only Jesus, only Christ can give you life. It's him that you must go to in order to obtain, in order to receive it eternal everlasting life forgiveness my friends from god the love for god in our heart that's why the killing the love for god in our heart hating our neighbor hating ourselves hating god's holiness hating god's justice a natural bias to choose evil oh you see i'm free I'm free to choose as I please. I can be anything I want. I can be a Christian if I want. I cannot be a Christian if I want. No, my friends, the only choice you've got is to do evil. Is to do evil. 
you've got a natural bias to choose evil. God requires of you that you should choose life, that thou and thy seed should live, but you choose death. You choose nothing but death. Because you cannot, you cannot choose the good. You cannot choose for God. You cannot choose for Christ. You cannot choose for obedience. Not until God, not until God saves you. Not until by my gospel you're born again. Not until your nature's changed. Not until God performs this wondrous miracle in the heart of men and women putting life into their soul and putting his love into their heart. My friend, thou shalt not kill. Sin's expression, sin's expression of hatred for one's neighbor, my friend, is the taking of human life. Again and again and again by many ways. The present holocaust that you have in your society, in your world today, according to the World Health Organization, in the space of just one year, 53 million unborn children ripped from their mother's womb in the name of abortion, killed my friends in the name of abortion, contrary to God's commandment, thou shalt not kill. Enslaved, you see, can only choose the sinful, can only choose that which is contrary to God's law. Commandment, my friends, in the last days, the Bible tells us, shall be perilous times, dangerous times. Danger, my friends, for the aged. Danger, my friends, for those who are terminally ill. Danger for those who are vulnerable. Danger, danger for the unborn. Perilous, perilous times today, I tell you, my friends. No natural affection, the Bible says. I mean, wouldn't you think it a natural thing? for a woman to love her child, her unborn child? Wouldn't you think that an unborn child, the safest place a child could be is in its mother's womb? It's the most dangerous place for a child to be today, I tell you. And now, now they want to be killing them after birth. Huh? Now they want to be killing them after birth. I heard the report just the other day, two days ago, of a woman in a hospital in Glasgow, aged, infirm, unwell. A doctor came to visit her, and she was unwell. She looked as though she had had a stroke. The doctor comforted, consoled her mother, and said to the medics she would be back the next morning, the medics said to her, no, don't bother. We have just given your mother end of life drugs. End of life drugs. They killed her. They killed her. They killed her mother in a National Health Service hospital in Scotland. They killed her mother. In the last days, perilous time shall come. Oh, no bother to you. Oh, you're young. You've got years in front of you, or so you think. But your turn will come. The day will come when you, my friends, you will want defending against this wholesale slaughter, this culture of death. This killing, my friends, of the unborn and of the aged and the vulnerable. This is your national health service that you all so worship. 
in these pandemic days. No. This is your national health, health, get it? Health service responsible for the majority of abortions in your country today and responsible for euthanizing vulnerable aged patients. Killers, killers, legally, yeah, government approved killing contrary to God's commandment. Thou shalt not kill. So a culture of death, perilous, dangerous time, no natural affection, natural affection for family members, away with them, not fit to live, kill them, kill them. And of course, my friends, the abortion, well, the figures I think are something like 12 million up to present time, 12 million unborn children slaughtered in the name of abortion since 1967. Women, women get to choose. A woman, a woman can choose whether she wants to have the baby or not. She doesn't have to have a reason. She doesn't have to have an excuse. She can choose whether to have the baby killed or not. It's her choice. But the baby, the baby has no choice. The child has no choice. What do you think the child would say if you gave the child a voice? What do you think the child would say? Mama, 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 please don't kill me. Mama, mama, please, please, I'll be good. I won't cause you any trouble. Please don't kill me, mama. But the voice of the child is not heard. The child is never given a voice. Not unless men and women will lift up their voices and cry aloud in this culture of death and give the child and give the children of the womb a voice. Thou shalt not kill, says God. Thou shalt not kill. Mothers, well, they have reason. They have their own reasons for killing their children. They have their own reason, you know, for murder. For some of them, it's convenient. It's not convenient for me to have a child. Kill the thing. Kill the thing. Or maybe it's the career. They want to advance their career so the child will get in the way. Kill the child. Kill the thing. Get rid of it. Flush it down the toilet. Get rid of it. Murder it. Murder the child. Yeah. Convenience. Career. Lifestyle. Crafts your lifestyle, ladies. Having babies around, it craps your lifestyle. So kill it, kill it, get rid of it. Education, not finished yet. I'm still at university. I need to get my degree. Kill the child, murder the child, get rid of the child. I don't want it. I choose not to have it, but no choice for the child. No choice for the child. At the end of the day, my friends, it comes down to the dangerous age in which we're living. The perilous times at the end of the age. No natural affection. No natural affection. No affection for the child in the womb. No affection for the elderly parent in hospital. Kill them! Kill them! Get them out of the road. Then, of course, Mr. Johnson and his family, well, your present Prime Minister, 
they're advocating oh, that the, the population of the world needs to be culled. No, they think there's too many of you in the world. Ah, oh, they don't mean themselves, of course. Too many people in the world, they say. So the world population needs to be culled. Yeah. See what I mean? A culture of death. Perilous times, my friend. Perilous times. And they come to you, why? They come to you because of disobedience to God's law. God's commandment, thou shalt not kill, stands, my friend. All oh, the world might change. The opinions of men, of governments might change. Many, many things may change. Heaven and earth may disappear, may dissolve. But the word of God, the word of God abides forever. Thou shalt not kill, that will never go away. That commandment stands in God. God will bring manslayers. God will bring killers. God will bring murderers to justice. You don't face it in the court in Birmingham. You'll face it in the court, in God's court. Condemn. Condemn yourself to everlasting death. Unless that is, unless that is you repent. Unless that is you turn, unless that is you forsake your wicked way and turn from your unrighteous thinking, unless that is you seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near, unless, my friends, that happens before you breathe your last and go out of this world. Unless you're born again, the day is coming when you will wish you had never been born at all. My friends, the judgment of God looks. The judge, the Bible says, the judge standeth at the door. Soon that door will be opened and you will be ushered into his presence. Death, you see, is not the end for anybody. Suicides, they think death is the answer to their misery. No, my friends, that just multiplies it. Because death, you see, is not a state of non-being. It is appointed, appointed unto man once to die. After that, after that comes what? Oh, you say nobody knows. Nobody ever came back to tell us. Yes, he did. Jesus did. And he tells us. It is appointed as a man wants to die. After that comes the judgment. Then you stand before your maker. Then you stand before the judge of all the earth. Perfect, righteous judgment, judgment my friend. No excuses. No blame shifting. No, I didn't mean it. God will show you, yes, you did mean it. God will bring all men to judgment. We are by nature sinners. We are by practice sinners. Every single one of us. Some of you are godless sinners. Some of you are religious sinners but wicked, depraved, murderous, God-hating, neighbor-hating sinners, every single one of you. And my friends, there's only one answer to sin, and that's the Son of God, the only begotten Son of God, the Son of God who was God himself. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. The job was too big for a man, just a man. Oh, he was a man, but more, 
more than that. The job was too big for another Moses. The job was too big for an angel. The job's too big for all your, all your world religion to accomplish. God himself had to come. In the person of his son, Jesus Christ, he had to come. And he had to live the life you ought to have lived but cannot. And he died the death that you deserve. He bore the infinite wrath of God upon himself on that cross so that even mockers, even manslayers could be forgiven, could be washed and made clean and reconciled to God and have eternal, everlasting life. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem those under the power and under the condemnation of the law, so that those who believe in Him, in Jesus, trust in Him, that is, rely upon Him, give up their own perceived righteousness, which God says is as filthy rights in His sight, when they bring their self-righteousness to God's law, to God's commandment, and have it shredded, shredded, and sent to Jesus Christ, the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. The grace of God, my friends, the free, saving grace of God that God gives to whoever he pleases to give it to. And how? How? Through the preaching of the gospel. Through the preaching of God's law. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not commit adultery. By the preaching of the law and the preaching of the gospel, the good news, of God's salvation, righteousness by faith in the Son of God and the Son of God alone. No other way back to God from the culture of death. No other way back to God from the dark path of sin. No other way to get right with God. No other way to get the assurance of eternal life, death, how will that come to you? COVID-19, maybe when you're older and vulnerable, maybe the National Health Service will do it for you. However it comes to you, my friends, death is a reality. We're all faced with it, one way or another. God will take you God will remove you from his world to stand before him and give account of all your lawless deeds. So now, now is the accepted time, says God. Now is the day of God's favor, the day of his grace. That's why he says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Because you see, the day is coming when he won't be found of you. The day is coming when God will bring down the shutters on the day of grace. You shop in Birmingham today. If you don't get what you want, come back tomorrow. Come back tomorrow. The shops will be open again tomorrow. But the day is coming when God brings down the shutters on his grave. And you will be saying, where's the street preacher that I might hear him? Give me a Bible that I might read it. Where's the Son of God 
that I might believe upon his name. Too late. Too late. The door is shut and never to be opened again. So now, now, says God, now is the accepted time. Now, says God, now seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked, the murdering, the murdering, the abortionists, the euthanasians, the murderers, the killers, the manslayers, the lawless. Now let them seek the Lord that he may be found of them, that they may forsake their wicked ways, their unrighteous thoughts, that their minds and their hearts may be changed, to think God's thoughts after him, to agree with God concerning his being and character, concerning his only begotten son, concerning your state and condition and sin, concerning the remedy, the Son of God, crucified, dead and buried, and raised again, mighty from the grave, that you might be saved, forgiven, cleansed, pardoned, right with God, justified before God, made right with God, cleared in the court of heaven, no more condemnation in Christ Jesus, God, taken away by his blood, washed and made clean, made fit for God and fit for heaven. But now, now is the accepted time. And so today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart, as many, many have done in the past, and many do today. Harden not your heart, but rather yield. Raise the white flag of surrender to Almighty God through His Son Jesus Christ before the cross. Cry out to Him, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I have hated you and I have hated my neighbor. I have broken, I have trashed your law. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And grant me repentance, grant me faith in your Son. Grant me forgiveness, grant me eternal life, grant me salvation. Have mercy upon me, God, have mercy upon me. Cry, cry, and give him no rest until he comes to you. Until you know that you're forgiven. Until you know that you're right with God and have life eternal in your soul. Obey, obey the call of the Lord Jesus Christ. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Why? For the kingdom of God is at hand. The command of Jesus, repent ye and believe the gospel, Birmingham. Repent ye, repent ye, repent ye, repent ye, and believe the gospel. For the kingdom of God is at hand. You would like to have a copy of God's word. Check these things out for yourself. See that it is so according to God's word. His word, not mine. His message, not mine. Read for yourself and see what God the Lord would say to you. Maybe he will speak peace to your soul. I don't know. But take God's word. Read, meditate upon it. 
and see what God the Lord would say. You'd like a copy of God's Word that's offered to you freely. No cost, no obligation to you. You'd like one, you come and ask for one. May God bless you, Birmingham. May God bless you and have mercy, mercy I see upon your precious, precious, never dying souls.